Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. We're once again taking a look at the 2021 BMW M4, and you guys have been asking me, DMing me, wanting me to come back to do a proper feature, to test drive it, and to fully experience the BMW M4, and that's exactly what we're gonna do today. However, I can't start off the video without addressing the front fascia because as you guys know, the kidney grills are huge and how this generation doesn't look as good as any prior generation. But you wanna know something though, once you get behind the wheel, once you accelerate, you corner, you fully experience this car, you're gonna be singing a different tune. Now the model we have today is a competition, which means we have more horsepower under the hood. We also have the ZF 8-speed automatic transmission. But more importantly for this review, and the minute I saw it, I was in love, we have the Toronto red paint color, which goes really well with the gloss black bits and the gloss black wheels for this particular model. And I have to say, it looks stunning. So in this video, we're gonna take a deeper look at the BMW M4. We're also gonna see how it compares to last generation and also see why you should really give this generation a chance because I believe the minute you get off the lot and you start driving this car around, you're gonna be in love with it, but also I think you're gonna admire what BMW has done, especially in the generation where we're now seeing hybrid and electric technology make their way into these performance cars. And really, I believe that the G Series is the last generation BMW M3 and M4 that will be fully gas powered. Now, before I get in this video, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to Herb Chambers, BMW Sudbury in Sudbury, Massachusetts, for allowing me to do this review and also letting me come back to fully experience the BMW M4. The link will be in the description below so you can check out their extensive BMW inventory. And so, without wasting any further time, let's get right in this review. Now that the 2021 BMW M3 and M4 has been officially unveiled, we can finally get past overreacting to the design and instead have a better understanding of why the brand is so excited for this generation. In a time when manual transmissions are becoming extinct and hybrid and electric technology are slowly making their way into our favorite cars, the G-Series M3 and M4 has been a breath of fresh air and a testament to what performance cars used to be and to some extent, still are in 2021. As we experienced a few weeks ago, you can still own a new car with the manual transmission and rear wheel drive. But today, with the competition, we have a quicker, more powerful sports coupe that will take on a shrinking number of rivals that for the most part lack the driving characteristics of BMW's newest M3 and M4. Taking a look at pricing, by upgrading to the competition, you have a starting price of $74,700, which is about $3,000 more than the base M4. But as we all know, adding on optional features and packages can become a bit expensive, so the price tag can easily exceed $80,000. The question really comes down to whether paying a little extra is worth it. And unless you're strictly an old school enthusiast who prefers a manual transmission, you're going to enjoy the competition simply due to the overall connection you have with this car, despite the ZF8 speed automatic simplifying gear shifts. Yet it doesn't take away from the driving experience. A lot of that can be attributed to BMW focusing heavily on the M3 and M4's handling and cornering ability. And as we'll see later in this video during the test drive, the G-Series has a better sense of being a German sports car and coupe in 2021 than the F-Series did. Even for the base M4, you're receiving stability and composure and a feeling of being planted to the road. And that's why you can't go wrong by going with either option. It really just comes down to your driving style and personal preference. 
Since we've already done an in-depth walk around of the G82 M4 recently, I wanted to give my personal take on the looks of the M4, as many BMW loyalists have been pretty vocal about the front fascia. But I'm not as pessimistic as most enthusiasts are when it comes to the road presence, and in fact, I think it will grow on people as time goes on. So not only as a reviewer, I'm a videographer and I get to fully experience this car today. I get to test drive it, I get to film it, uh, I get to watch it drive by. And in Toronto Red, this car is stunning. I liked Isle of Man Green. Uh, at the uh, launch and unveiling event for this car at BMW Sudbury, I loved the Isle of Man Green, drew in a lot of attention. For some reason, Toronto Red didn't draw in a lot of people. I was like, what are they? Like, I think red looks really good with the gloss black bits, um, especially with the grill. Some people don't like the grill, but what I like with the M3 and M4 is that it's actually more integrated into the front fascia rather than having an outline. And with the M440i, you see it outlined, and I think it makes the grill look bigger than it really does in person. And then when you look at the M3 and M4, it really blends in all together. Another thing I can appreciate about the BMW M4 is that all the front grills are functional. So we live in an era where brands love putting on fake grills to make their cars look more aggressive and performance oriented, and they're really just there for decoration. And we're even seeing electric cars have fake grills as well, just because Americans and consumers in general like that traditional look. But one design feature that I really like about the M3 and M4 is the headlight housings and the laser lights. I think it gives this car a lot of character, and I think it makes it look a lot better than the F-Series as well. And uh, I have to say, when you look at this car coming at you, and as a videographer, I can see this car from the exterior and see it drive by, I think that this car looks amazing. That's why I don't get caught up with the front grills. I'm focused on the entire package, and I love the new front fascia, uh, even besides the kidney grills, but I love uh, the way that this car has been designed. And also when it comes to the M4, I love the rear end, the way this car looks. It's just designed right. That's what I like the most. I think it will grow on people. And the reason why I'm very optimistic is because everyone talked about how, the, oh, the Supra, it doesn't look like the old Supra. Everyone didn't like it. And yet it's outselling the old Supra did uh, in the 90s. And I honestly think for that particular car, and again, I, I should be talking about this when I review one, uh, it's a BMW essentially. And I think that's why it's so compelling. And then even with uh, the M3 and M4, the, the current generation, the modern age of BMWs uh, are so amazing. They perform well, they respond well, they're great at cornering. Uh, this is what you want in 2021. Not many brands are doing this anymore. And especially where you're looking at German brands, uh, you know, Audi and Mercedes-Benz. Mercedes-Benz is getting rid of the V8. Then also when you look at Audi, they don't offer rear wheel drive or a manual transmission. BMW has that. It has the manual transmission. It has the rear wheel drive. It has everything you're looking for if you're an enthusiast. And I think uh, you will definitely learn to love this car when it comes to the exterior. You won't need to buy that, that extra front end or that, that uh, aftermarket front end. Simply because I think uh, these big grills have a purpose. They're to bring in air that they're meant to cool the engine. Having that aftermarket front fascia is just not going to work, I don't think. So I think you're definitely going to like uh, the M3 and M4. Once you see it in person, once you experience it, you're going to love it. Under the hood, the M3 and M4 competition will offer a healthy increase of performance with 503 horsepower and 479 pound-feet of torque compared to the 473 horsepower and 406 pound-feet of torque that come standard for base models. One of the key differences is the transmission, as the competition will come equipped with a ZF 8-speed automatic, which pairs very well with this twin-turbo inline six-cylinder engine. But also, when shifting through gears, it's effortless. From an enthusiast standpoint, it's understandable that the six-speed manual will be far more popular among purists and then taking into account that you have rear wheel drive and now you have an M3 or M4 that is certainly one of a kind in the modern age of performance cars. Now speaking of drivetrains, all wheel drive will be made available later in 2021 for better year round drivability in colder regions of the US, which could eat away at Audi sales for the RS5. For those who have a lead foot, BMW states the M4 competition can go from 0 to 60 in 3.8 seconds. But as we're already beginning to see from journalists, it's actually slightly quicker. And speaking from experience, this car most certainly feels quicker than advertised. Stepping inside, 
you're good by heated and ventilated M Sport seats, which contrasts greatly from the carbon bucket seats found in the M4 we featured a few weeks ago that's geared more towards complementing aggressive driving and tracking, whereas these merino leather seats are perfect for longer road trips and provide a good amount of bolstering to hug you when you're on a spirited drive carving through wooded back roads. As part of the executive package, you will have a heated leather wrapped steering wheel with aggressive 10 and 2 positions, along with a wireless phone charging pad, Wi Fi hotspot, and gesture control for the iDrive 7 system. When taking a look at this user interface, there are a few features we didn't go over last time. In the M menu, you can fully customize your driving style from steering input to braking, suspension, engine, and even how aggressive the gear shifts are. Now, of course, you can open and close the valves for the exhaust. And as you'll hear during the test drive, the sound being pumped into the cabin enhances the driving experience, while also bringing this car to life as you cruise around town. You'll also have three different drive modes, road, sport, and track, all offering different driving characteristics. Obviously, with it being 2021, the M4 competition will have park assist to go along with a variety of camera angles to make sure you don't get yourself into trouble when backing into a tight spot. An interesting feature found in the M4 is the gear shift lever, which does differ a bit from the M340i and M440i. To put the M4 into reverse, you slide the gear shifter over to the left and up, mimicking a manual transmission. And to put it into drive, you pull the gear shifter to the right and repeat this again to activate the paddle shifters. As discussed in the video where we got our first look at the M4, interior layout is pretty much the same as other G-Series models. And if you want to know how much room there is for the second row and overall cargo measurements, click on the link below for an in-depth walk around. All right, so we have worked our way up through the ranks. Uh, we started out with the BMW 330i two years ago, then the M340i, M440i, and now we're behind the wheel of the M4 competition. This is gonna be something that I will remember for quite a while. So let's have some fun, but also be responsible. Now, since we are in traffic, of course, might as well go over the interior layout first and foremost. Basically the same as the BMW 340i, also the 440i. Uh, that is something that I would definitely overlook, but also if you're comparing this to say the F-Series M3 and M4, this is a significant upgrade for sure. Oh my gosh. You know, the weird thing is about the M4 competition is that everyone talks about the weight and yet this car feels really light. It does feel light when you're moving it around. Uh, it maneuvers very well, it corners well. Uh, and then of course the throttle response is on point. Uh, I have to say, this is a very special car. You feel so connected to the road. It has a nice low center of gravity and this is a, a, a much needed upgrade over the F-Series for sure. And you guys know, as you guys watched all the uh, BMW reviews I've done, I've talked about the generation right in the middle of the two, 2010s where you know the F-Series, not a huge fan. Uh, it was kind of going away from where BMW was always uh, all about, which was the driving experience, driving dynamics. And then the G-Series comes along and here we are back again with a car that's all about being fully engaged behind the wheel. Now everyone wants to be up in arms over the exterior of the M3 and M4. Like, oh my gosh, the grills are so big. But get behind the wheel of one, experience it, and then say that you don't like it. Because I honestly believe that this generation is special. It's going to be remembered for possibly being the last fully gas-powered generation for the M3 and M4. But I think some people will say, well, the F-Series looks better, you know, not as big kidney grills. And you know what, go right ahead and buy one. You can get one for like $40,000. But what I'm gonna say is, is that you're owning an inferior M3 and M4 model because I think it's worth paying the extra money by going with the G80 or G82 because this feels really amazing. And also with the F-Series, you had a dual clutch transmission, whereas this is a ZF8 speed and I love the ZF8 speed because it responds really well with the gear shifts. Let's try the paddles. <laughs> oh my gosh, and the paddles feel really nice. They're carbon fiber. 
wow just wow you get kicked back in your seat this is what it's all about you know we, we look at cars now and you start wondering you know are we moving towards electrification hybrid technology and this is one of the last of the true M cars I believe I don't know how many more they're gonna make after this generation but wow just wow I'm speechless now I do have the chassis set in sport mode so you do feel some of the bumps but I gotta be honest this is the best way to drive an M3 or M4 just because you want to feel connected to the road you want to be one with the road you want to feel uh, you know a sense of of connection to the car as well and that's exactly what I'm experiencing here uh, the the M4 competition is truly a special car and it sounds amazing inside the cockpit it, this is just really truly an enjoyable car now of course I do have the valves open and this would be very useful in about I'd say a year when people start showing up in their C63s that are powered by a four-cylinder hybrid and you can just say well you made the wrong decision because this is an inline six it sounds better and I can say that for sure it's gonna sound better uh, four cylinders just do not sound great at all and if you're buying a car at around eighty thousand dollars you want to have a nice sounding engine you want to have uh, the better exhaust systems and I think and even though I have not experienced a new uh, C63 and probably won't until next year uh, I am gonna say this right now that I think the M3 and M4 uh, is going to be remembered to be a better car and it's just because I think it's fully gas powered and I think it's a pretty nice performing uh, sedan and coupe as well. Also you have plenty of visibility here to work with. A pillars are not very aggressive. When you look out the back plenty of vision as well and then also let's get to the hood aspect because the hood does sit a little higher up but you can still see what's in front of you so it definitely still has that European style to it. I'm going to do one more acceleration here before <laughs> I think that's good for today I'm probably gonna get myself into trouble if I uh, continue doing that but wow just wow I mean I, I could drive this car all day just the way it sounds the way it performs the way it handles uh, this was a very special day and I'm so glad BMW Sudbury allowed me to come back uh, to film and feature this car once again and to also experience it as well so at the end of the day, as a test driver in the M4 competition, I'm going to say this. The G-Series will be remembered as one of the greatest generations for the M3 and M4. I'm willing to make that statement and stand by it because, wow, does this car perform really well. And a lot of people, again, we have to come back to the exterior. Keep in mind, most of the people that don't like the front fascia had no intention of ever buying one. So I think that you should actually go to your nearest BMW dealer, test drive it, experience it, accelerate, corner with this car because you are going to fall in love immediately. And when you compare this to the F-Series, I think that's what a lot of people will be comparing this to, at least when it comes to the exterior. But when it comes to performance, this is a significant upgrade over the F80 and F82. This car responds well. You feel very connected to the road. You feel very connected to the car. It's most important as well. But also, even if you don't want to go with the competition, you have the ability to go with a manual transmission. You have rear wheel drive. You have that old school feel that you don't see anymore in 2021. The G Series M3 and M4 is the last of its kind. And it will be remembered as a special car in this decade for sure. Because I think this will be the last fully gas powered BMW M3 and M4 because we're already starting to see BMW start focusing on hybrid technology and there will be some more cars coming out later this decade where, we, where we're going to start seeing that. But I think that if you're looking for something that's performance oriented, that's fun to drive and it's also modern and new, then the G Series M3 and M4 is the way to go. I think that if you're coming from an F80, F82, you're going to step behind the wheel, you're going to drive it, and you're going to be like, wow, this is a significant upgrade. And I've been left speechless. I, I really was. I had to really soak that in, that test drive, because this car really performs very well. It's also a, an improvement over the M3 and M440i, because I thought the M3 and M440i were great driver's cars, even though they weren't the full M car. But the M3 and M4 is a completely different beast, 
And I think that it's definitely a special car that you should at least consider taking a look at because when you look at other uh, German brands right now, Audi's not offering you rear wheel drive, they're not giving you a manual transmission, and Mercedes-Benz dropped the V8. So if you're looking for a German performance car that's brand new in 2021, really all you got now is the M3 and M4. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more. Also make sure to follow me on Instagram at Boston Auto Blog so you can see what I'm up to and what vehicles I'll be featuring in the future. And I will see you guys next time.